So everyone, it is my uh, deep uh, pleasure uh, and honor to invite you to a new episode of the Human Design Experience podcast. Uh, and this is a very, very special episode for me. Uh, the, the lens today is Dawn syndrome and autism and our current mutative field. Uh, and I am uh, really thrilled to see you all here. A little bit about this podcast series. Uh, it's it's uh, called the Human Design uh, Experience Podcast. And uh, I will present myself a little bit more later, but I'm also the organizer and founder of uh, uh, Human Design Experience Festival. And this podcast is, is a branch of the festival in that way. It uh, carries my, my love of, of meeting people uh, in the Human Design Network. Uh, uh, and uh, we do the festival uh, one time a year. So uh, I, I'd like to have a, an opportunity to meet you all between the, the festival also. So, uh, yes. Uh, we've done some episodes already before. You can go into our YouTube channel and and uh, and check out the episodes. Currently doing two series. Uh, this series, which I, we call the Countdown to 2027, uh, where we we set uh, binoculars at 2027 and the mutation. And the second one is the Manifesting Generator podcast that I'm I'm running, uh, which is, which is my type. So I put up a little pr uh, procedure for this podcast. <clears throat> uh, I will use uh, a little bit of time in the beginning to introduce myself uh, and give you a presentation uh, of my story uh, with, uh, with the mutants. Uh, and and uh, that is uh, both a personal journey, uh, which is now... As I can remember, it started back in 2003, uh, and it's uh, the journey with human design uh, really shows me in, in my way uh, how I carry my incarnation cross, uh, this being really uh, one of the causes uh, in my heart on my journey uh, as a sphinx. Uh, and it's also uh, uh, my professional uh, experience also, I mean, with human design, but also uh, working with uh, with uh, uh, the mutative spectrum uh, as a professional caretaker in Norway. So I, I, I deeply look forward to, sh to share, share my journey. I made a little presentation. And then we're going to go uh, over uh, uh, into a very special guest uh, here I have today, uh, and a friend of mine from Brazil, uh, Carla Lima. She, she um, well, she's a lot. Uh, she, she will uh, <laughs> present herself later, but she's a researcher uh, in the field uh, on uh, uh, on the mutative spectrum, uh, so to say, uh, they have uh, developed a technology uh, where they work uh, with uh, with beings with uh, autism and more. So she uh, she will share some of that and uh, look uh, deeply forward to that, Carla. Uh, and then we will move over to into a participant sharing. I opened it up. Uh, if anybody would like to share something, uh, that's your opportunity. Uh, and uh, after that, if there's time also, we will go into a general uh, Q&A question and answers where uh, you uh, from, from here in the Zoom meeting uh, can come with questions, type them into the chat and we will uh, organize them and bring them into the end. And also if you're, if you're watching live on Facebook, you can still uh, type in the questions there. We have an uh, assistant there, Anna Maria, she, she can bring the questions over here into the to the Zoom uh, meeting. Uh, yes. So, yes, uh, a little bit uh, uh, information first. Uh, we, are, we appreciate donations. It keeps this podcast running. We currently have uh, PayPal options or, or direct bank account, which you can get information by, by email. So, a little bit short about me uh, in the human design context. I met human design in 2007. So, so it was after, shall we say, my initial meetings uh, with uh, the Dawns uh, was in 2003. So, so I met human design later uh, on my trajectory. 
which was interesting because it was also human design who somehow correlated my, my experiences somehow. Uh, I'm uh, the director of human design system Norway, uh, where I uh, kind of currently develop myself within human design and also the Norwegian network. Uh, and I'm also the founder of human design experience festival, as I mentioned, which takes place uh, here in Romania. So this is me, uh, very short. I'm a 2-4 profile uh, manifesting generator. I'm a missionary. Uh, that's the 2-4 uh, profile or one of the archetypes, or not archetypes, but characters uh, from that profile. Uh, I'm on this, uh, also on the Sphinx. So, so uh, that's for me, uh, the being a 2-4 and also being a Sphinx is, is very... Uh, it's very relative to, to this journey for me. Uh, and I probably will go into that a bit deeper. Yeah, I'm also individual, uh, as you see here in my beat, uh, on my own way, also as a Sphinx. Uh, and for me, this is really, a, shall we say, a terrain, which is uh, very interesting for me. It's, it's something that uh, entices my Sphinx a lot. So uh, yeah, I, uh, can't say how thrilled I am to, to uh, have this opportunity with all of you. Here I am uh, with, uh, by the Sphinx uh, here in Romania. Uh, it's uh, a well-known Sphinx and a tourist attraction here, shall we say. Uh, so it's not only in Egypt, they have a Sphinx. And uh, I'm sitting here and uh, looking at the mountain actually uh, up here with the Sphinx. So, so it's a, a very special uh, uh, opportunity for me to see that this podcast takes place uh, right now when I'm uh, as a Sphinx and, and sitting here in the uh, Valley of the Sphinx here. Um, so yeah, uh, I just wanted to mention that <laughs> as it, it came to be. You can go in and check more if you want on that Sphinx uh, in Romania. There's plenty of information online. And before I begin, I just want to, um, uh, oh, I might get a bit emotional sometimes uh, during this podcast, but uh, my heart really goes out to all the, the beings on the spectrum. Uh, and um, there is uh, countless of magical experiences that I want to relate today, but there's also great suffering. Uh, and we, we, um, we can't forget that. So, so uh we who know human design, we can see who they are. They are really the ones who are paving way really for the mutation. And uh, so, so uh, you know, they are really doing an incredible job, uh, which is uh, uh, amazing to recognize. And then also, uh, he belongs here uh, so much in the discussion, uh, Rao Ruhu. Uh, in loving and living memory, he, he's probably with uh, so many of us. And uh, he, you know, he, uh, he mentions uh, autism again and again uh, in the context of uh, 2027 and, and uh, you know, the mutation, the coming raves, uh, part of, uh, shall we say, our uh, genetic uh, mutative uh, process also, uh, uh, that autism being part of that. I will get into Dawn syndrome also, and, and uh, I know very well that Ron never mentioned that, and uh, I haven't gotten the opportunity to, to say, corroborate my experiences as such with, with uh, a satisfying authority for me at least, and, and I look forward to, to get that opportunity. But my, my experiences, both with the Dawns and autisms, uh, stand out by themselves, so, so I don't need any, any verification as such, but, but uh, uh, it would be an interesting thing to see in terms of uh, in human design again what uh, kind of shall we say part of the mutation these different beings on the spectrum are bringing um yeah i just mentioned just as a paragraph here you know the the, the information we have from ra you know about the autism circuit uh, about this architecture that uh, that is a precursor to the rave. I'm not going to go so much into that now, but uh, my point, um, I think, being that yes, we we 
in the uh, in the human, human design umbrella we know about the rapes we, we know that there's a coming somehow and, and um, we are, can look at the current mutated field and autism has been shall we say, recognized in many ways and, and, and I'm here as kind of putting our flag down also for for the dawns and the dawn tribe and, and I just want to bring out this with this definition uh, straight away. And, and uh, these definitions I bring forward here or bring forth are, are an accum accumulation of uh, all of my years with them. And, and this, uh, shall we say, a specific download, I, I would uh, call it, uh, where both this definition and the one autism came in a very serious uh, experience with a, 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 a child with, uh, with autism, uh, Leo or Miracleo. I, I will tell more about that story later, but, but uh, it was during, he was in a car accident. Uh, and he's, he's the son of my best uh, friend. So it was during that time when he was in a coma that, shall we say, a lot of clarity and a lot of information came to me. Uh, uh, after many years of, of experiences with, with them, uh, shall we say, and also the growing, shall we say, awareness, uh, and mutative awareness and cognition uh, in me, uh, also thanks to human design, shall we say. So yeah, uh, Dawn syndrome, uh, former Down syndrome, is, is nothing down here. We know that very well. It is even an extra chromosomes. And, and uh, it's the dawn, it's the dawn of what's coming. Uh, uh, that, that's clear to me just by, by the experiences I have with them, which stretch over 17 years uh, at least uh, on this specific timeline. I know also from childhood I have uh, been in contact, shall we say, auric contact, but, but it, was, it wasn't in before 2003, if I remember correctly, uh, when it began to happen, a, a process uh, with the dawns. <laughs> and, and the same with autism, former autism, and, and autism here is, I mean, the, the first three letters there is AVE, as in, you know, you are in the AVE of something, uh, uh, and that's really what I'm left, uh, uh, shall we say, uh, left with uh, after my experiences with specifically um, Leo Miracleo, uh, I will explain his name a bit later, but, but uh, just seeing the mutated capabilities in him over time is just left me in Abe. Uh, so yes, um, just wanted to mention also, I'm not the only one, I guess, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm really not, uh, of course, but there's another term I also saw, osomism, which has been connected to, to uh, autism. So uh, there are other terms there also. And I want to mention a third syndrome, which I also have experience working with professionally. And I haven't, this is, uh, I haven't coined this one. This is, this, uh, if you go to Wikipedia, you will find it. And actually, this is the Wikipedia text I use. And I don't think it needs any alteration. It, it's good as it is. It, it's called the Angelman syndrome. Um, just let if I'm going to use my word, this subject I worked with a female, um, physically uh, looked like what I would imagine as a Neanderthal, a very rugged, squared uh, facial hair, hair uh, in the ar on the arms, etc. Um, but uh, under that, a very, very sensitive soul, which was very feminine. It was amazing to work with this. Uh, this being, uh, I have some, one of my most, uh, shall we say, unbelievable experiences was with, was with her uh, in, in uh, meditations, I would, would call it somehow, not, not planned ones, but what kind of transmissions. But I might come into that a bit later. But it was, it was interesting to see uh, in the definition in Wikipedia, if you, if you see down here, um, that this mutation brings in the beings they, they're known for that the children or, or these beings have a particular interest in water. I don't know if that correlates to the, to the mutative um, 
uh, shall we say, um, experience I have with them as Neanderthals, but we know that in the Neanderthals, you know, their, their mutations what it was uh, around the larynx, which basically made a Neanderthal breathe underwater, uh, which then the Homo sapiens couldn't, but, you know, they, they, they got the uh, ability of speech and, and verbal communication. So, I mean, that's, you know, that's just my uh, contemplating, uh, uh, but uh, yes. I have put up a little timeline here. Um, maybe this is um, mostly for me. I might come back to it, but, but it's, it's to explain my story here a little bit. And uh, they, they generally, I would say, the majority of my experiences surround around the dawns, uh, which, which then started around the 2003, um, where I had my initial contact. And then over the course of the years, you know, down the years here, four days later, I meet human design uh, and, and kind of quickly get into, uh, shall we say, rape cosmology in 2027. I get uh, you yeah, aware of that information so that kind of accumulates in, into my shall we say uh, journey here but in the first four years you know there was just meetings uh, with the dawns uh, which I basically didn't have um, any explanation of I couldn't put it into a, a context so yeah I, m I might come back to this um, uh, during my presentation. And I am, if you saw my design there, my, my throat definition is abstract and I am a manifesting generator. So, you know, I might go back and forth a bit and, and this will be surely an abstract story because it also is an abstract story. A part of uh, the story, the way I become to see myself in, in this particular path uh, with them, uh, also, thanks to the knowledge, uh, uh, so a character part of my missionary uh, is the Pied Piper. Uh, and I cannot think of any, um, shall we say, symbolic or, or, or character that fits my, my, my experiences with the dawns better than this. It has been a magical connection to, from the beginning. Uh, and then over the years, uh, you, you know, this is 15, 16, 17 years, the way, way I have developed coming into myself, into my G center, starting to live out my characters uh, and seeing more and more that I became kind of this magical, like, colorful creature uh, and then coming into contact with them. It fits this um, Pied Piper very well. So that's a testimony to the knowledge uh, again. How how we can uh, how I can use the knowledge, you know, in, in a very on a magical journey, but I can use it as a framework of what I'm experiencing. So I just want to give you a little bit um, introduction to me somehow uh, during these years, and I guess these photos you will see here of me just to kind of set the stage here a little bit are from the latter years. I would say from the three four five last years so so not from the beginning but but uh, by this kind of i would say i'm getting very well developed into my character and here i am in the, in the arctic uh, norway uh during another festival i was part of creating um where i uh, was managing the healing area and i'm here with my uh, cane or staff with a crystal on top uh, this is, I think, four, three o'clock in the night. Uh, this was during summer, so it was a midnight sun there. Magical. Yeah, here are some other snapshots of my uh, developing into character here. Uh, these wings are, uh, should we say, semi-real. <laughs> I can say that. But uh, yes, I'm here with my staff again. And here... I was also a shepherd uh, uh, living on a farm at that, this time. So, so um, I was into sheep. Uh, so I have um, custom-made hats and everything. Here I am with my sheep herd. 
the Balthasars. You know, my, my motto was don't be, don't just be a sheep, be a wild sheep. We have uh, wild sheep in Norway. So, um, yeah, here I am with Balthasar, the, the ram. Uh, I got very close to him. Uh, that, a similar magical experience with him, I, I would say. I mean, he, 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 he was just there as a very, you know, an explicable anchor in my journey. Uh, also, when I'm experiencing this, I'm a sphinx. So, I, you know, I usually post posing, giving directions. Yeah. So, um, you know, meeting the Dawn tribes um, has just been um, a magical journey. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to try to sum it up here. I'm, I'm, uh, first of all, I just wanted to <laughs> have the opportunity to say I'm really grateful to be able to share this. Uh, the channel 1333 is also the... Uh, you know, it being secrets, and, and, and this is definitely a realm of me which carries secrets, and it's abstract, so I'm not really sure how to put it out, but I made a presentation nevertheless, and I'll see if I, I, I can I create the story out of it, but um, the, the Dawn's tribe, um, my meeting with them, it started in 2003, uh, it's been a continuous meeting of... Uh, uh, magic uh, coincidences and, and consciousness. Um, you know, I'm meeting in the heart consciousness. Uh, they often have the, the dawns, the beings, they often have a heart condition. That's kind of their thing. Uh, often a challenge, uh, by the way. Uh, uh, some need surgery, etc. So uh, many, you know, they paint hearts, for example. So it's, it's, it's part of part of them, their, their tribe. I would say that they have been my, uh, shall we say, sparring partner uh, into the, the field of empathy, which is a field, you know, I, I'm relating it to telepathy, but telepathy was never really my thing. I mean, I, I get really thrown off, nervous, shall we say. I have an open route, a lot of open centers, so I kind of never really found myself in that. But Empathy, which I, you know, I, I as a human designer would call, you know, this is the the the, the field of solar solar plexus. Uh, this is really where I felt I met met the dawns. Uh, in, if I'm, you know, if I should put it forward, in some kind of solar plexus awareness, um, to the best of my knowledge, it has been. A meeting of individual, but as a tribe. And I, I use hive awareness here to try to explain this. Um, because during these 17 years from the first meeting I, I had, and I will, I, I will recall this in my presentation, but from that meeting on, meeting another subject, uh, and you know, forgive me being so kind of clinical here, but but a person uh, with dawns, uh, shall we say the evolution of every meeting is, it has been like I met the same person, uh, but it has always been a new person. I, I kind of never met uh, the same person because it was all, always somehow random meetings. Uh, and this has been a very, very interesting, shall we say, evolution for me. Um, Meeting them, uh, yeah, I would try to get try to get should we say, come into that a little bit more. And I just have to say this: uh, I mean, it's hard for me to govern if this is true or not. But but in the end of my experiences with dawns, I mean, it's still continuing. But but so we say in the latter of, of many, many years with them and kind of where I more and more get kind of accustomed, attuned to this just awareness field around them. So I can just jump in and kind of play with it and just be in it. I've experienced past life information, um, merging of, you know, 
time and information, at least what's kind of <laughs> circulating around my head or awareness. Again, I mean, it's not so important. I'm, I'm not seeking out to kind of validify it, but, but it, it becomes an interesting trait uh, because it belongs to just a continuous series of, of experiences with them. And it's not only me who, who of course, uh, most parents uh, that I know of who, who have a, a ch uh, child with Downs, they, they know their magical dimension and, and uh, you know, the, the, they just know of this heart space around them and how they, you know, transform and, and uh, but yeah, I've been following a, a, spe a specific site called Special Miracles in, in America for many, many years. They have, uh, I think, half a million people on their Facebook and, and they definitely also have taken this step into, you know, shall we say past uh, this stigma that the, that's often kind of surrounded them uh, in, in many, many ways and, and they're bringing out this new perception of them. So yeah, I will come back to the timeline here because I think this would be the best way to. Uh, I will now kind of zoom into some experiences I have. Uh, Try to um, make this uh, journey with the dawns into a little movie for you guys. Um, so the first dawn contact I became aware of, I think I remember back, it was in the winter of 2003 where at that time my, my son was uh, newly born and and um we were living in a place in norway um in oslo the capital but but it's kind of a natural uh, shall we say environment there so you have the forest very close we were living in the outskirts of the city and in this area there, there, there showed to be a particular high concentration of, of being with dawns several centers etc um and it, it just adding that to the story in generally i think you know compared to many many nations in norway you know there are, there is good infrastructure and and uh they generally live a um, you know acceptable life uh at least to some definitions so uh at that time uh, i'm a hermit so i, I was uh, going uh, listening to music uh, a lot so I'm kind of sub submerged in that and and uh and i am um, so basically my first meeting it it happens in this way that i'm just going in the street around where we live and i get this um shall we say not hunch but a physical you know pull in my my right shoulder and then when i turn around i i see then uh, this being with dawns and it doesn't register me or anything like that i'm just seeing it and you know I, I don't really think anything more about it it was just you know something that happened but i observed it it was a pull uh, and you know for many years i you know i didn't really think of that incident so much but it became clear to me over the years that this thing it started then because after that incident it just happened more i got this pull i was walking around somewhere and i got this pull and i would see another being with dawns and typically they would be then you know on a walking around uh, you know for a trip uh, but always with a caretaker uh, you know never alone uh, so yeah this was the premise for for the first two years i think meeting with them I would just go around in my own business. Um, my son was growing up, he was a baby, he was in the kindergarten, so I was walking a, a lot around between our home and picking him up. But I, got, I just got these pulls and I saw one with Dawns and I, I kind of got used to it, but I also got worried somehow. I remember, I, uh, you know, <laughs> my open mind and, you know, my my when when there is change in the air you know my mind you know often fears what's there so i was fearing you know i was if my son might have dawns you know i didn't i was searching for connections basically well uh, he didn't have dawns and uh, but it did 
continue. Um, and it continued for, for, for um, I think, two, three years. Just this thing. I mean, it, 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 I, I guess it, I, it grew a bit uncomfortable for me because I just, it happened more and more. Uh, you know, I would say from a month, you know, weekly to a, you know, on a daily basis. Um, and then there's kind of another point here in 2005, I think it's around there, where I would say there's stage two of the, the contact with them. So I'm, I'm walking on the street again, and um, it's, it's the same shall we say, setup. I'm listening to music, and I get this pull again. And by now, I'm very well aware of this pull, and I'm just, I know what to expect. And okay, there's going to be one with Dawns. I turn around very well, there's one with Dawns. But at this time, something more happened. Uh, the subject with Dawns also sees me, and we, we zoom in to some kind of gaze. Uh, but the thing is that that person was maybe 200 meters away from me, and I registered this in you know in my right awareness that you know this is, you know this is uh, strange somehow. You know this is, you know there was something there. The, 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 the gaze and the feeling it was pleasant. I mean, it was just, it was like I saw someone I haven't seen forever or something like that. So I, it wasn't anything unpleasant in the gaze, but I found it very kind of strange somehow. But at the same time, also, it gave me, I guess, as a generator in this process, it gave me like, aha, you know, I was at a new place. There was this thing, you know, recurring by then hundreds of times, but this time was different because we there was a the, there was a connect uh, with the, with the opposite side, and, and before that that never happened. It was just me getting the hunch, seeing it, and just you know, life went by. They didn't register me, but that's where we uh, where I got eye contact the first time. And after that incident, uh, I kept meeting them. But th at that time, I got the pull, and then there was always eye contact. I mean, it was just from that point on, there was always contact with the other being. And it hadn't been for years. Then suddenly it is. So this is, again, to kind of explain how... You know, I'm meeting all, all the time a new individual, but still there's this development to the contact that seems to come closer, shall we say. At this point, it starts to feel that it's something is coming closer. And as the years pass, you know, this just becomes the norm. I see one, get the hunch, I turn around, we see each other, and that kind of has its own development. We're more and more kind of, Keep keeping the gaze longer and longer, uh, kind of questioning in the field. I mean, there is a granulated development there all the time. Uh, and then I meet Human Design in 2007. <clears throat> and between 2007 and 2010, I'm, I'm already aware of, uh, you know, the, the, the voice and information about the raves and autism and stuff. So I, I'm starting, I guess, to connect my own dots uh, when it comes to this meeting with the Dawns because there is something really sticking out by, by now. Uh, and then, um, I mean, there's so countless of experiences here. Uh, I don't know where to start even, but... but uh, but I'm, I'm mentioning some highlights, and I guess there's a highlight here in 2010, where then after seven years of meeting them, I, uh, this I remember it was around Christmas times, um, and I was listening, I was going around listening to music again. It was my way of, as a hermit, of ex escaping the the city bus. But at this time, I wasn't listening to music. I was listening to uh, Ra uh, speaking about uh, the raves, uh, which by then was kind of uh, something I was deeply called into as, as a second line. And um, 
at this point, you know, uh, the, the contact has become quite close when I meet on a new subject with Don's. Um, I mean, to the point where I'm just, you know, I, there's a big question mark inside of me. Like, why is this happening? It's very, I mean, I, I'm not afraid anymore because for me already by then I see an awareness in them that is very mystical somehow for me. And it's very clear because they are having this gazing with me. And, and you know, I have never mentioned a caretaker in this setup because the caretaker, you know, the, the caretaker that was the one taking care of the subject with Dawns was the one who was totally out of the loop. I mean, he was just in his own world. In mundane world, shall we say, oh, you know, there's the cross light. To, oh, you know, I have to take care of this. Oh, it's a car, you know. But we were just like in this other room, you know, some other contact. So, so you know, of course, it, it, there's expectations, I guess, grow, growing out of that. So, so by that time in 2010, after seven years, you know, I'm really like curious now. I want to find it out. So, so this incident I'm coming to, uh, I'm meeting a group of dons, I will call them elders, because they were maybe in their 50s, 40s, 50s, maybe 60s, uh, which is quite old for, for, for dons. And this was in a, su a supermarket, quite big one. And they were sitting on a cafe, uh, engaged in their own business as I'm approaching in my own business um, and, and I'm kind of passing this cafe uh, and I'm going there listening to Ra speaking about the raves and then I get this hunch or this pull again but it didn't came from back but it just came from front and I look straight up because I was I guess I was looking down I was, I was, uh, as I was walking uh, I look straight up and then I come into this direct gaze with, uh, I would call the, the elder leader there. He was the one, he was standing up, the other ones were sitting on a table, and he was obviously talking to them. And I'm kind of just slowing down here, the a matrix moment here, to kind of explain what happened. So I'm looking up, and I'm we're gazing, and he keeps on talking to them as he, he hooks on the gaze with me. And just by that, I was super impressed. Like, wow, you know, these people are definitely not retarded at all. I mean, this, this is like, wow, how can he just speak with them and be totally fixated on me? How, how would you be abrupted, you know, in my conversation at the least? And, and this happens. Our gaze is totally fixed. I mean, it's so strongly fixed. And, and as I'm approaching him in a curve, uh, to, kind of to pass and go further, me and my open solar plexus, my open root, I'm nervous because I just feel like, wow, now it's going to happen. I'm going to get contact now. We are so close in proximity. He is just baffled by it. I'm baffled by, by it. And there was really, uh, shall we say, not a voice, but I think this field, emopathy, there was something saying there like, who are you? Come say hello, you know, I'm, I'm as surprised as you, you know, I don't know this either, but it was this very, very strong gaze in us. And he keeps the gaze with me until he kind of turns his head 180 degrees as I'm turning past them, basically. And he's still talking to the rest of that group. And I'm not sure if this makes sense for you at all, but, but, but it wasn't a demonstration of awareness for me. I mean, it was just, I never experienced this with any person on the mall ever. Uh, and, and this happened uh, with him. And this, for me, was kind of a crowning of experiences that even though I felt a bit like, ah, I should have just said hello. I, I, I think I thought that for many years, actually. I should have just went for it at that point. But, but I, the experience in itself was, shall we say, um, a definitive answer to a process with them that, that showed that they had this uh, other side of them that I didn't know of and that I kind of calling it out in them also. I'm kind of starting to see myself at, 
as such, I guess, as the Pied Piper. I mean, I wasn't really aware of the Pied Piper at that point, but, but I'm coming into that, that, um, that character. And then uh, jumping here to 2012, uh, and then I, I moved to a farm, where, uh, also very close to Oslo in Norway, where there's also a high concentration of them. Um, yeah. And I guess b between 2010 and uh, 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 this kind of, so there's a high, high point here. And, and uh, when I moved, I remember there was a couple of years where there wasn't so much contact suddenly. Uh, I thought it had ended actually uh, in 2012, 2013, something like that, uh, after I moved to this farm. Uh, but no, suddenly it started again. Uh, and my first experience, I, I remember that kind of initiated, uh, I guess, another stage in this uh, was uh, not with one with Dawns, but one on the more uh, autism spectrum, I would say. Uh, I never knew him, uh, so the professionals, yeah, I, I really don't know, but, but he was also part of this uh, center uh, that I later came to work on professionally on, on that place. And this is a center for beings on the spectrum, dawns uh, uh, and autism. There was that subject with angels, uh, angel man syndrome, and it's, it's really a role model place. Um, where they have their own apartments, they, they grow food, uh, and it's also in a very natural uh, uh, environment. This place where we're, where we're living here is a peninsula close to the sea. So in 2012, uh, I think I want to try to <laughs> relay another uh, story here uh, with this guy that initiated this next stage for me which was just so inexplicable. Um, and, and this was a peninsula, so, so it had kind of a big, shows a horseshoe type of shape. So you had these long distances driving from one side to the other of the island. And, and I'm driving on one side on this long stretch. And, and um, on this stretch, there is this, shall we say this, um, uh, you know, the road goes down quite steep somehow in this uh, valley type of environment. I, I need to just explain the environment of, of uh, shall we say, the experience to, to, to uh, try to explain what happened. So I'm driving a car um, and uh, I'm happy. I'm, I, I moved to a farm. I'm, I'm kind of getting into that. But... Um, I had, it was kind of a pause with these meetings with them uh, up to that, this point. So I'm driving the car and I'm coming up to this kind of the top before it starts to go down uh, on the road. Um, and then as I approach the top, I, I, I observe, and, and I guess by this also I'm well into human design and, uh, you know, if you remember my design also, the, my openness and kind of, I'm getting into observing my form, shall we say. Observe my form, my, my right hand reaching up uh, and, and, you know, kind of saying hello, greeting someone. And, and before it's actually doing that, I think, I think that my hand is going to reach for the volume uh, on, on my, on my, my uh, speakers there, right, in the car. But no, it, it's reaching up. But I don't understand why, and this is, again is a kind of a matrix second where, where you know, I, I got a lot of time to think back at these experiences. So I'm kind of, I also got to see what my mind was thinking. But my mind was kind of, I didn't understand why my hand was waving. As my, I drive down, the car rolls down, I see a, a person, uh, you know, 300 meters away on the streets, uh, quite tall guy. This guy was quite tall. He also waving his hand. So that's kind of, you know, after a second there, then I, okay, there's, that's why my hand is reaching. That is, is waving to this guy 300 meters down the street. I had no idea who, 
we was at that point. And then as my car kind of approaches him, I, I see more of what he's doing. And he's basically turned around the other ways because, because he's kind of face away from me because he's speaking to someone on the street. But his hand is still kind of just reaching and, 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 and waving at me somehow. And then as I approach him, approaches him closer, I, he turns around and he's kind of like looking at his arm a bit. And then we get quite close on the road and we're kind of looking at each other still with the arms up. And, and you know, I really didn't know what was going on, but for me, kind of already used to these experiences, these magical experiences, I was like, ah, oh, okay, I'm, I was accustomed to kind of flow with it. And then when I get closer, I see that this guy, okay, is a bit funny looking. Okay, so yes, he, he was on the spectrum. I just uh, instantly saw that. And I also, you know, I got so close to, I could see his face. And he was also very kind of very surprised what, uh, who I was and what we were doing there and why we were waving like that. Yeah, that's, I guess that's sort of broadness, my spectrum also of meeting beings on the spectrum. Before that, I, I it, it was exclusively the dawns, but, but from 2012 on, I got in contact with more uh, of them. And at that point also, there was recurring contact because this was a smaller place and, and uh, you, you just saw them, you know, in the public spaces uh, around this uh, place. Uh, and eventually in 2017, just to jump a little bit, I got to know them also, again, more professionally. So I really got experience with, with a, with a group of people or she was a penta of people or a why even. Um, 2015, uh, is, is another very, very special, um, highlights, um, uh, and that brings me into the next chapter of the presentation. Uh, meeting Miraclium, my best friend's son uh, with autism. Um, here is his brother, Sam. Uh, I talked to Amir, yeah, which is, is their father, and I, I'm allowed to share the experience uh, and I'm allowed to show photos, etc. But I, I chose not to bring a photo of Leo somehow. I don't know. It was probably okay. But here is his design anyways. Uh, and here is a, a painting I did. This is my only painting. But this, I, I, the best of my knowledge, this, this came through him as a transmission uh, somehow when he was in a coma. Uh, I never painted before. I, I haven't after. Uh, I guess this was in 2000. 15 years. So I wanted to add this. This painting is called Miracleo. And, and uh, his name is Leo, but he, he, he got that name after this experience he had in 2015, where he was in a car accident and, and he, um, he uh, was in a coma for uh, around two weeks, I think. And his brother, Sam, is also on, on the spectrum. He, I would, do, I would guess you would call him, yeah, he has more of these Asperger uh, attributes, uh, shall we say, if, should, if, if we shall kind of compare it like uh, such. Uh, but uh, Miracle is more advanced, shall we say, mutated. Um, by the time of his accident, he was already around two years old. Uh, and in, in the beginning, uh, I knew uh, his father uh, many years from before they were born. But from, from when, he was, when he was born and, uh, you know, he, he would come into an age where you would expect eye contact. He, he was, you know, definitely not doing that. Um, I think I, I might be correct if, if, you know, even with the mother and father, they also, it took time with them, basically. Um, at this point, you know, I, I'm, sounds maybe, uh, you know, very unemotional, uh, 
we have been through a lot, but, but you know, f- for me, he was, you know, really my first opportunity, a uh, subject to, to, you know, tune in with, with, with uh, the autisms. Uh, but then, uh, you know, I have a lot of experience with the dawns and then also growing experience with different parts of the spectrum after I moved to this farm. Uh, uh, so, so, so Miracle was really, you know, an opportunity for me also to be, you know, co- you know, aura contact, you know, very close, intimate, shall we say. I mean, uh, I'm there, I was there with the mother and father through their waves, you know, and, and uh, et cetera. So I was, I was a big part of their life, uh, still is, of course. Uh, so I got to know Leo and, and for me, you know, it was the way he didn't look at your eyes was, you know, spectacular. I mean, it was almost magnetically that he could look, he could look everywhere in my body, but just not the eyes somehow, or maybe the face. And I, I understood early that he had, a, or I experienced at least, I understood in my own experiment that he had some, you know, mutations to, you know, his, his pineal, you know, to his eyes. Uh, that he wasn't, I guess in the beginning, I was thinking of it in such a way that, you know, he wasn't ready to look at us yet. You know, I was thinking of our not selves, you know, our, because he was, you know, I felt that he was more tuned in to seeing the aura field, perhaps. It was the way he engaged in looking that it seemed kind of uncomfortable to look at some something for him. And I, I could imagine that we, I guess, I guess my, this might be information as I have being with him in the aura that, you know, we grown-ups can be a bit, uh, you know, uh, tired some to look at because we are, our frequency is a bit distorted, you know, uh, and if you think about our aura and our not self, you know, it might make sense. So that's how I kind of became to know Leo. And he, you know, he was very fascinated in patterns, very abstract patterns, geometric. That was his just, you know, from early on, he was just very fascinated by that, you know, type of the patterns uh, on this, this painting. Um, and then he has this experience um, uh, with this car accident. And I want to say this because this was my experience with it. And... Uh, He was um, uh, run over by a car two times. Uh, it was a tragic thing, basically, because it happened, basically. He was sleeping in his carrier. Uh, at, for some reason, he had managed to get out of the carrier. Uh, and, and then, you know, there was a neighbor, and uh, the, it happened. And, and uh, basically, what happened to him, that all of his bones was crushed, uh, except one, I think, type of hip structure that, that, uh, that was intact. I mean, but they all, you know, the whole spine, everything, the, the, the cranium was, uh, it was really, really severe. And initially, when this happened, uh, um, I remember, you know, I, of course, it, it was a shock, but, but in that shock, I remember getting this very clear idea that, uh, no, uh, I, I told them, I mean, first that you don't worry. Uh, he he chose to do this. Uh, he's just going to prove that he's going to come out of this better uh, and better in the sense more clear, shall we say, more, more present. Uh, that came to me immediately. And I was, I remember I was nervous to bring it forth to him in the beginning. And I, I, I think I waited uh, um, in the initial, there, I mean, there was an initial round of shock here. And then he, he went into a coma and there was so much uncertainty, but uh, it was important for me to, to communicate it to him. Um, and over the course of these two weeks, uh, when he was in a coma, there were several things that became clear to me, or came, shall we say, became clear within me somehow. And it was tuned into, into him. Uh, and uh, we were, uh, we were, organizing a summer party on that farm I was living within these two weeks uh, in, in the end of this period. 
Uh, and um, you know, to my best of my knowledge, I was in contact with with Leo, uh, his soul, or, uh, during this experience. And, and um, uh, while I was organizing this this um, party, also uh, I had a very clear sensation that he was instructing me to to do certain stuff on that party. And and one thing was a ritual uh, that we invited the that all the participants that came there. There was around two hundred people. And and um, at that time when we we, we did that, uh, it was funny actually because uh, I just did it on the fly. I didn't really have any uh, thought of how to do that. And then the grown-ups came together, and, and and you know everybody wanted to do it a little bit their way, you know. And then then we started to do something, and, and um, we were gather a lot of people there. Um, and then I remember that uh, there was some moment where, where uh, I closed my eyes and everybody's is silent. And then the children start to play, that, the children that's present on, on this party. And, and they, uh, they create this very magical atmosphere of, of just playing. Uh, and um, in that way, I could see how uh, Leo had somehow kind of instructed me to, to put up this uh, formation of people and kind of doing what we were doing there somehow. And then in the end, I was guided by the children. And um, very well, uh, that, uh, that was in the night. The day after, uh, uh, Miraclio, he, uh, he touched his hand or he moved his hand uh, after for the first time. Uh, and then... Uh, Gradually, he came more and more back uh, from the coma. Um, his recovery was miraculous in its own way, just by the fracturing in his bones. I mean, he, he really, he, he, they couldn't really explain how he, his bones could, could heal that fast. And um, I remember meeting um, him uh, for the first time after his experience uh, on the hospital. Uh, and then by the, this, you know, this time I, I felt I have been in contact with him, him a lot. And it was a lot of, you know, emotions and, and, and um, you know, we, we were really afraid, uh, of course, for a long time. But I remember the m remarkable thing when he was, uh, his father, he came out with him in, in the wheelchair. And Leo... Uh, instantly look me straight in the eyes and he fixes his gaze like he never had ever before and I was almost put off by his presence uh, because I was never devoted this focus from him before um, yeah this is quite emotional for me uh, but it was a beautiful moment and and um and yeah, he came back from this accident, uh, he fully recovered. Uh, and uh, after that, he was more clear, uh, shall we say, he was more a bit, I mean, he was very clear before also, but he, it, it's, you know, it's hard really to say what really what happened to the, but with the best of my knowledge, he managed to do something there that uh, made him come better out of it. And uh That experience just left me in Ave. <laughs> because if this is true, you know, I just don't get it. I mean, uh, how can a child, you know, how can a child do uh, design this, you know? I, I mean, he, he told me initially that, you know, I did this on purpose, mom, dad, don't worry. Uh, I just needed to uh, readjust myself a little bit. You were basically feeding me a bit wrong, um, but now I just need to facilitate my form uh, so I can have a better experience. And I'm going to do it this way. You know, that's just how it is. Uh, you have to live with the emotional baggage of this somehow. Uh, and, you know, still when I say this, I, you know, I, uh, <laughs> kind of afraid of getting sued or something. I mean, I, I say this with the uh, deepest respect that, you know, that, I mean, even in this, there was so much, uh, suffering in this, but still, this is this is my um, 
this is my testimony from the contact with him and um Yeah, I won't put words uh, in the mouth of his father, but we are very good friends, and, and he 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 shares a projector, and he he shares the experience uh, with me. I want to mention this because this is how I, after his experience in the in the crash. Uh, and the hospital, the coma, coming back, you know, recovering, you know, and I, I guess some months go past. And then I remember one incident uh, that took place with him when I was alone with him uh, in their home, kind of just caretaking him a little bit while they were taking a shower or something like this. And I get to see, you know, this is the, my, my abstract throat. It gets to see back at experiences, you know, so I've grown accustomed to that. So, so after the accident and then he recovered six months after, I get to see then some months before the accident. And I remember an experience with him. And at that time, we, as I told you, he was a bit more in, you know, in his own world, uh, you know, focused on patterns and... and um, not so much kind of communicating or if I, I would say he wasn't disabled in any ways. He just didn't care, you know, he had something much cooler going on there. So I, you know, I was just like, no, look, you know, it's not about changing that somehow, but, but he was into that basically. And he was uh, watching cars uh, on the screen. And he was running over between the TV and a table with some toys, basically. And on the ground was this carpet, this Persian rug. Uh, and and uh, he was doing his pattern there. He was running back and forth from the table to the TV, like repeatedly. I was just observing this. Uh, and then when he runs from the, comes back from the TV, at one point, he suddenly stops in the middle of this carpet. And I'm like, oh, wow, something new. And then he starts to run around in circles uh, on this carpet, like looking down and doing something with his arms, stopping up, running the other way, just doing this dance somehow. Uh, that I felt I was, yeah, he was very into patterns. So, you know, I, I could somehow see that he used his patterns in his movement somehow. So I'm remembering this experience then, uh, six months after, and I'm kind of getting this a bit chilled on my spine somehow, uh, because I've been saying, you know, the, during the experience that he chose this himself, and, you know, that he was kind of directing this himself. Uh, and then I kind of could see this experience of how he somehow, I mean, to the best of my knowledge, again, he somehow used this in the GPS to, you know, save up a pattern somehow that he would be perfectly hit by a car without, uh, you know, taking damage, but he would uh, actually, you know, enhance his form somehow. No, maybe not enhance it, but, but adjust it somehow uh, to a different state than he was. Um, yeah. Again, you know, it's very hard to know if this is truth, but, but uh, the truth is he, he, he recovered and, and he is uh, who he is today. And, and uh, that's, you would talk to his mother and father, there's no doubt he had a miraculous re recovery. Yeah, I, I, um, I guess that was my experience with him. And, and also into this field. Uh, I just added this as an inspiration. I, I, I don't know how to explain uh, my, my contact so much with them more than this somehow. You know, they have, again, often in great suffering, I think just using my experience also and, and uh, also for, as a yoga teacher, I think nutrition is a key for them. I mean, it's a key for us and it's a key for them. And if they are mutated, and they are, you know, what about their dietary system? I think that's, that's a, it's a cause worthy of inspection. And what can come out, you know, f when they can be more in their form.
I used a lot of time now. Uh, I'm uh, coming to the end and we will move over into the interview. I just wanted to add this one. Um, and just to give a reference, I have to go back to my graph. So there's moments here in 2005 where I recounted having the first zoomed in contact. Before that, it was just me seeing one. What, what's going on? I don't know. No interaction. What was going on? Is God joking with me? I mean, I was really going around in my open head with this. So in 2005, I had this Zoom. This, this, it was an initiation. It's the best way to describe it. And many years later, I would say between 2015, 16 maybe, I see, I get to see this experience again. And I think I was doing yoga or something and I was uh, resting after a yoga set in Shavasana. I often go into this journey somehow in, in my mind. I often, often travel back. Suddenly I'm back into this experience and I'm, I'm in the street where, where this happened, but I'm in kind of in a bird's eye perspective, seeing us from above. And I was there. And that being was there, but what was remarkable, and for me, it's funny because I remember actually this happened in the actual experience, but more like a flash. I just noticed a flash somehow, uh, but uh, you know, I I didn't get anything out of it because before I could see it back, but then I could see that flash. And to the best of my knowledge, again, I could see the aura, and that aura was huge. I mean, it was, I don't know, 50, 100, 200 meter around. I mean, I, I couldn't really measure it because it, it was just a perspective, per perspective perception for me, seeing me uh, and that being. The thing was interesting. It had a more translucent blue color. So I, I understood it in my experience that the energy... In us, is, is, I mean, the aura was in us is smaller but more compressed, and uh, which with their energy was somehow more translucent, but, but the, the auric diameter seemed to be much further. I'm throwing this, I'm, pre I'm presenting this not as a fact, of course, but, but something to take in, and I would love to hear your opinion. But I think that would maybe explain why I experienced. Uh, this kind of hive awareness with them that I would imagine if they have, you know, if they have a meter, a radius of 100 meters, 20 meters somehow, they could very well somehow be connected in kind of auric uh, uh, constructions or constructs that, that we, that maybe it's new somehow. Uh, and maybe there is informational exchange, you know, on a, on a different level than, than, than we're used to. That's just my, shall we say, mental caramel I've been, been thinking about for years. But, but I saw what I saw, and I don't usually see so much. I mean, it's not to kind of justify it, but, but, uh, but this thing I saw. Yes, finally, I can um, start to speak with somebody else. I just want to... Before I have some water, I wanted to just introduce Carla a little bit. Um, she will do it more herself because it's, 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 she's very advanced. I mean, she uh, is very impressive what she did, did, so she can say better herself. But she, uh, Carla Lima, she's from Brazil. Uh, she's a one four generator. Uh, I, I think I remember correctly, triple split uh, emotional. Uh, she has emotional awareness. I think she's a triple split. And she's on the cross of planning. And she's an author, uh, mathematical sciences. I mean, she's a researcher. She's a scientist. Uh, you know, she, she, she's a lot. Uh, so it's going to be a, very interesting to hear from her. You know, with Ritmo, uh, her, her company, uh, where they're working specifically on, on beings on the spectrum. So. Okay. Uh, 
I belong you to Carla. So let's see. Here we go. Oh, hey, Carla. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Thank you for the invitation. My pleasure. Thank you for taking time for this. Yes. To, uh... it, I, I like it a lot. It's very interesting um, talk about this special children. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's important to to let the people know how amazing they are. So yes. I'm yes. happy to be here. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. But just, <laughs> I have some questions for you. Um, we, we can begin with, but just to take this one straight off, can, can, do you share, you know, do you share these interactions with them also, this uh, magical type of interactions? Yes. Um, I I I would like to 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 show uh, how uh, can my experience help these uh, these children and they help me to understand them yeah. and uh, try to try to help them with uh, technology and uh, and uh, help them to understand the, these uh, these emotional the, the emotion. Yeah. Because it's hard to them uh, understand that. Yeah. Uh, because they feel a lot. Uh, they uh, they have this uh, stronger emotion than us. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you understand, but it's yeah. uh, it's it's kind of we are have this of emotion, and they have that of emotion. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Yes, so that's interesting they, though. Mm -hmm. Th they're yes. thinking about solar plexus, uh, you know, being the center for emotional energy and waves and, and emotional, you know, experience, and that center being, you know, mutating. So, so yeah, it's interesting to hear that. Uh, I have some questions for you, Carla. Is it okay I uh, ask you some? Yes, sure. <laughs> so, could you maybe tell us a little bit more about your uh, self, uh, you know, on this path, uh, working in this field, uh, on this spectrum? I mean, uh, you know, what, what kind of scientist are you? You know, uh, give us a framework here, Carla. Okay. Um, I'm from Brazil, Rio de Janeiro. And uh, in 2013, I started my graduation in social science in Federal University, University of Rio de Janeiro. And uh, I, I would like to be able to understand uh, people in society, right? And uh, how they behave, uh, its, inf its influence, mm -hmm. the individuals on the society. So in 2016, I, I finished this graduation I, and I start another in math, 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 math science. Mm -hmm. in the same university mm -hmm. and i met i i i i want to 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 start this university because i would like to to work a week with uh stat statistics and the data technology and so on but uh -huh. i i didn't i didn't know with what i i uh what i i he did. I, I, I didn't know yet. But uh -huh, that came it, later. Yeah. Yes. Uh, in the same year, I met my professor, José Otávio Pompeu. Mm -hmm. He is autist. And, yes. uh, we, and he uh, asked me, well, uh, what do you, uh, what's your dream? Uh -huh. And I, I stopped and uh, think about that. Well, I think I would like to work with music. And he said to me, well, you are a musician or composer, performer? No, mm -hmm. absolutely not. I'm not. I'm not performer. I'm not singer. I'm not composer. I, I just like music a lot. And I think the music is a part important of uh -huh. our lives. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure. so emotional. Yeah, I'm so emotional because of music and I would like to know more about that. How can I help people feel like that also? Uh -huh. 
So we start uh, research about music and the cognition, uh, yes. how impact, how music impacts uh, our brain. Mm -hmm. And uh, so soon we are met the general council of Nor Norwegian Embassy in Brazil. Mm -hmm. And he uh, said to me that our uh, research, it's a, it's a very interesting and there is a it, it, there is a a place in Norway that reaches also uh and uh we he he, he can put he, uh, then we are in contact uh -huh. and and so i in 2018 i went to oslo to oslo uh University of Oslo. Uh huh. That's to... where, we, where we we met also there in Norway. Yeah, that's yes, where we, yes. Yeah, we, we got to know each other in Norway first. Uh, uh, yes. You know, very random. I should maybe mention that actually we were at, but um, we were at a, a hawk concert in Norway. Yes. Yes. Where you were, um, where you were actually you, you were testing out your equipment. Yes, yes. Uh, and uh, we uh, we are going to we are went to uh, University of Oslo, and there we are we, we meet the Ritmo Institute. It's an uh -huh. institute uh, in University University of Oslo that uh, study movement, music, brand, cognitive perspective of of brand uh -huh. and uh, we start a cooperation between these two institutes and then uh rich things was burned and uh, uh, uh we show uh, our work how can uh uh collect the data and mm -hmm. the day and the we we uh, start developing our uh, own de uh, device. Uh -huh. So the, the, this device is uh, uh, still uh, in devel development, but I think in 2021 uh, or 22, I don't know, uh -huh. uh, they, they read. Uh, can, can you maybe tell us a little bit more about uh, that technology and, and how you apply it? Yes, uh, this technology it's a wrist uh, band uh -huh. like a, a, a clock. It's is a it, rhythm. Is it, is it the one yes. to the is it the one to the left here? Um, both sides. I but think. is it the one on the presentation here? Uh, this, this is yes, 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 uh -huh. yes, yes, mm yes. -hmm. It's the the presentation. It's uh, the first one here. Yep. Yes. Uh, so uh, the, the these uh, devices uh, show us uh, some uh, particularities of your bodies, uh, and we can read the graphics mm -hmm. uh, with some information like temperature, uh, EDA, it's a uh, uh, cardiac uh, beats, uh -huh. and we uh, this mix of uh, of of data. It's mm -hmm. uh it's mean a uh, one one emotion. Uh -huh. So we read these data and uh, we can know uh how emotion uh the the, the guy or someone else uh, it's feeling that time. Oh, so so let me just uh, see if I understand it. They for example they would wear the wristband and you go to a concert and and then you yes. can do these readings and then you can see what they liked uh, somehow or I yes mean, can... i i will explain this this graph uh there is a vertical uh, lines uh, uh -huh. there there is a blue one red one uh purple one and uh, so on mm -hmm. this first line uh oh, the first line uh, blue line it's a uh, eda it's a measure uh, the constant fluent change in the set of electro properties of the skin, like sweat, uh -huh. uh, excited, 
uh, of our skin because the the brand send electrical damage uh, electrical damage um, answers to our our body and the, uh. our body respond of this device yes yeah, right interesting mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes so uh you can see that uh the graph is up and down up and down up and down up and down and that uh, edge up and edge down it's uh a it's a, a emotion that that represent with emojis um so you're, so you're actually invest you're actually researching emotional waves yes it's wow. it's it, it, the, the emotion waves and the in the sound waves it's uh it's almost the same yeah, because you know, our can... our yes our body uh mm -hmm. respond these uh sound waves yes 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 if if i can add that to you uh ross said um that um Yes, it is so. Music, uh, you know, directly corresponds with the solar plexus center, the emotional waves. Uh, he yes. uses this example many times, so that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, sometimes we are listening to a music, to a song, and we feel some uh, something special in your body, in our body, right? Yeah. It's because our brain it's respond to these electrical uh, electrical waves of sound inside the of, of your body mm -hmm. and this, uh, send these electrical damage uh, waves to all body uh-huh have, have right? you so you can you basically track uh, a negative emotion and a positive emotion also with these graphs Uh, Carla, uh, Carla, Carla, uh, uh, I have to unmute you. Uh, your sound went away. There we go. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no problem. Uh, it's interesting because when we have uh, neg negative emotions, yeah, uh, we can uh, understand what we can do for a person or not. So, uh, for example, autistic children there is a sound that angry him yeah. uh, and uh, we can understand what this, this sound can do with him and uh -huh. try to don't don't do that yeah, yeah. so he he uh probably will be more calm quiet mm -hmm. and relax comfortable mm -hmm. and so on mm -hmm. Very interesting, Carla. Uh, this is amazing to, I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure also other people here are uh, fascinated by you know, the correlation and how to actually study into the solar plexus center and understand more sides of it. And another question, uh, could you kind of give us some uh, real uh, life examples on how you have used uh, the te technology to, to improve the, the life for, uh, for being on the spectrum? Yes, the first one, it's the this graphic that uh, you show now mm -hmm. it's uh from uh my prof my professor that have uh autist autism and he can't um cry in the public uh -huh. it's funny because in the aha concept they crying a lot <laughs> uh -huh. they express uh they express ah, yes, yes, yes. Sure, uh sure. his emotion Sure. Yes, and uh, it's represent uh, in the middle of the graph. I I think you can show that. Uh huh. Yes. Uh, yeah. Right, and uh -huh. uh, crying because the emotion it's high, uh, high, in the point that he can uh, hide this emotion, right? Uh -huh. And we can understand how uh, how that. Uh, impact his life yes. and uh, another example it's for our children uh his name is uh samuel he can't uh, take uh, our content he 
didn't talk with his mother. I uh -huh. think uh, he's 18 years old now. Uh -huh. and so we are we start uh, trying to understand how how uh, he's feeling about sounds that uh, he used to listen, like uh, a song of Phil Collins. Uh -huh. And uh, he came to our lab laboratory, and we start to to testing some sounds with him. Uh -huh. And uh, we we are observing, uh, we are seeing our, our this uh, uh, behavior mm -hmm. with these sounds, and we discovered that the music of Phil Collins that's a bit of drums that. Uh -huh. uh, uh, let him more quiet and more comfortable. Uh -huh, and uh -huh. uh, we we talk with the, with so, his mother. Uh -huh. And uh, she uh looking look looking at him at home to to see this behavior it's continue. It's uh, -huh. uh if his behavior it's, it will be continuous and uh, the 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 re response is uh, positive, and uh, for so, so you can basically track that he liked uh, in the Phil Collins music. He liked the beats, basically. Yeah. Uh -huh. yes. Does he does he like beats in general also, or drumming, or? Yes, drum, drum. Uh huh. So it's the yes. drum he like. Yes. He liked the drum. Yes, yes, and a uh, few months uh, later. Um, he start talking with his mother. Wow. He feels uh, comfortable to see uh, to talk with her, and uh, talk what he want. And uh, I now he's uh, in a drums classroom. Wow! For, amazing. Yes, yes. Wow. For start uh, expression, he's emotional. Wow! Uh, in the music. That's amazing. It's, it, uh it's it's not uh, uh it's not uh, the only only example uh, example uh -huh. you have more uh, also. I, yes uh i i i don't know if you you feel no but michael jackson it's uh it it was autist uh-huh and uh -huh. he yes his expression his emotional in music i see how, how and the dance uh -huh. In dance, yes, uh, there is a uh, a lot of research that uh, say that because the the behavior of him it's a autistic guy, and uh, he only expression his emotions in dance and the uh, and the music. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Did did you it, measure his music uh, somehow? Or? Sorry. Did you measure Michael Jackson's music uh, on subjects? Uh, yes, yes. Uh huh. Yes. Do do it, do it, they do they like his emotional spectrum or uh, the the beings with with? Yes. Um, the the spectrum of the emotion it's uh, it's a different of the kind of person, right? Sure, sure. Yeah, and uh, I I never. Uh, I can't mention the 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 spectral emotion of Michael Jackson, but there is a uh, there are so many uh, researches that uh, show that the behavior of him it's autistic person. Uh, ah. The eye contact, uh, the 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 kind of he talking in interviews, but his expression the maximum the maximum uh, emotional in the on the stage uh dancing and uh, -huh. uh and uh, uh sing definitely mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes it it's a it's a i think it's a safe place that uh, some people uh found to expression his emotions mm -hmm. the emotions right yes so uh, another question here also uh, more in uh, maybe the human design terms you, you have known about human design for a while Yes. <laughs> uh, do, do you I, use I it? Like to, do you use I it? Like in, you, mm -hmm. Sorry? 
Oh, continue, Carla. Sorry. Okay. Uh, I met you in 2018, and yes. I never heard about uh, human design before. And uh, it was a surprise to me when you say to me, I read them hours. Uh -huh. So I, I think it's a, it's a very interesting, this other perspective of emotion, yeah. of uh, our body, our aura. Uh, and uh, well, you show me a lot of uh, things about that. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's it's interesting because uh, uh, I understand that uh, I'm emotional, uh, yes. <laughs> and uh, it, it's it, it's a uh, it's why I feel so emotional listening to music and uh, mm -hmm. uh, work with I uh, choose to to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's interesting. It's it's really interesting, and I I I would like to to learn more about that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, in September, 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 of yes, September, yes, 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 yes. yes. Yeah, I was I I went to workshop, uh, and uh, we talk about uh, the different chart, and uh, mm -hmm. it was so so cool you know, and interesting. It, there is a very uh, vibrant human design community in Brazil. Um, actually, I, I didn't realize that before now. I will connect you with, with, uh, with, with some of them. And they have events all the time. And, and uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Anything you want to share, uh, Carla? I mean, there's so many questions. And uh, I, what do we see here? Is, is the wristband? And is this a VR helmet? or uh? VR? Yeah. Yes. It's depend because uh, they, uh, we are uh, think about to uh, give uh, of, on the people some uh, reality yeah. uh, from concerts or so on. But uh, for for now, we are not using the the uh -huh, VR uh -huh, glasses uh -huh, uh -huh. and only the the wristband. Mm -hmm. uh, it's more useful for us. Sure. Nice. And yes, and it uh, the thirty one. Uh, uh, it's uh, a, a memory of this uh, virtual uh, virtual intelligence that uh -huh. uh, that uh, learn about music and uh, show us the spectrum of sound and the oh, motion wow. amazing yes yes amazing. Wow. yeah I'm, I'm so you, you just your whole profile uh, with your with um with the company and everything you just have this very nice uh, vibration to you and, and the, the technology is amazing uh, can you unmute yourself again uh, carla i think you took your mute on oh my there we god go. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Do you want to share anything more, uh, Carla? Uh, we ha I think we have a half an hour left now. Uh, if you want to share something more, and um, you know, uh, we can open the. I will open after the the the, the microphone to uh, people in the audience if they have some uh, experiences they want to share or we can move it on into a question and answer. And you can also, of course, ask uh, uh, me questions and also, of course, Carla uh, and all we as a group also. So, Carla. Um, uh, I would like to say uh, that autism, it's not a disorder. Oh, it's not a disease. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a new ability that we must understand these children to have this environment uh, comfortable for them uh, because uh, they are so special, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. extremely smart, yeah. and we we must uh, uh, understand that they uh, have uh, special feelings that we must understand. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, and yes. uh, that's it. If you have any question, I'm here. Mm -hmm. 
let's see what comes up. And I, I just want to say that too, uh, as Carla saying, just, uh, you know, round up here, as I said, to begin with also, I mean, it's very emotional for me because I also, when I worked as a professional, I see a lot of suffering. I mean, I, I cannot just close my eyes to it. I, I you know, it, it's there. Uh, it has a lot to do with their, their stigma. Uh, and, and coming back to the, you know, the, the definition, my definitions, you know, I, I use them. I've used them for many years now uh, since they came to me. And um, it's also serious because uh, it yeah. needs a whole shift in the awareness about them. You know, Down syndrome and autism, I mean, it, it, brings, it brings a lot of stigma. And that also has to do, shall we say, how, you know, the... the traditional medical sciences has defined them as something uh, disabled, you know, something, uh, uh, you know, not at least as we can see it as advanced uh, mutations as with advanced abilities. Um, even though, I mean, I, I, there's not only doom and gloom, I think there is awareness rising in both fields, but yes. it, it's very important. And, uh, you know, ju just to continue on that story, I think, you know, in, in terms of, the coming of the raves, if we, if there was ever an opportunity for us to prepare, you know, to interact, correct interaction with the mutative field, shall we say, more in, shall we say, in, in, in I don't know what the, the definition would be, but you know, the dawns as a collective, the autisms, you know, the, shall we say more, uh, the different mutations, um, which are here already now as collectives to kind of in a correct sense to, to see what they have to say about the mutation. Uh, I think today they are, they are also often just in a, in a situation where it's about survival somehow, you know, and, uh, and just coping with it in, in many, many ways, even in Norway, um, where I worked, even though that was a very amazing place for them, it was even there, uh, you know, there was, um, stigma there also just in the way that since it's government run there's protocols there's way of behaving with them being proactive you know there's many many of these things uh that yeah should uh very well go, undergo a change so yeah i mean there's no doubt in my mind how magical and and uh, and you know, they, they are you know they are the they are the one who can foretell the future. You know, they, they, I think it's an amazing thing that they are here with us and, and they probably have a lot of information we can use. Uh, just as a reference to this, I'm jumping back and forth, but this painting is amazing. I mean, uh, it's not that big, but it's uh, around one meter uh, 20, I think, uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the width, but it's a very interesting painting to meditate on. Uh, shall we say in a mechanical way for my eyes and I I discovered this you know after of course I painted it and etc I was just into these circles and how if they were perfect or not but but uh, I got to see you know again in my my experience what Miraculo transferred to me in, was some kind of visual program you know that I, I cannot really explain even so yeah, let's find my let's find out more about that stuff. That's my what I want to do. And, you know, it's my my experience over all these years. It has to do with play. You know, being in the heart with them in the play. It's such a nice dimension to be in. I mean, it's just it's just so much creativity and um, yeah. So let's jump here. We have uh, come into. Sharing here, we have some questions. Let me just look here. Yeah, so let's just jump into the questions here. And if anybody wants to just say something, you can uh, tell uh, Pascal or just say in the chat, and you will get um, you will get the word. Shall we say? I'm just gonna pick the question here. Okay, from Dede to everyone. Ask Pergis can be very so very difficult for teenagers who wants to fit in 
with peers? Do you think your technology can... So this is for you, Kala. Okay, so I will take it again. Uh, Asperger's can be so difficult for teenagers who want to fit in with peers. Do you think your technology can be easily interpreted as and used by an older teen? Uh, can it be used by older uh, children or teens? Uh, it is such a difficult time of development, even with a your typical difference. My child has always had a physical outburst meltdown. So yeah, Kala, if you unmute mute yourself, uh, how maybe you can say a bit more of the application spectrum of this device. Uh, is it the young children? Uh, is, is it teenagers? Well, uh, that, that, that technology can use by uh, all people, uh, children, teenager, uh, and adult. Uh, because uh, we we understand with these research that the our brain it's always uh, growing, increasing. So uh, um, they, uh, all people can use it by not only children or young teenager, old teenager, or so on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very good. Very good. Mm. It's another question here, a bit more practical. Um, when is the device, uh, com when do you think the device will come to the market and, and will there be an app uh, and it, will it be for personal use or is it th therapeutical or, or how do you envision it? Um, I would like to, to put them, uh, put it on market for all people. Yes. Uh, but we are um don't have um don't have uh finance financial uh, -huh. uh for for do do that right now so I see. Uh, -huh. yeah, uh so uh we are trying to to do that for 2021 or 22 i don't know uh, -huh. uh, uh -huh. and uh to put them on market uh with uh cell phone app to uh, to you to the people see the feedback of uh emotional graphics uh, -huh, uh, uh -huh. it's easily uh uh in a easily way for 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 understand yeah and and that is it for now we don't have uh how to do that but in a future uh we hope so I mean, your project definitely deserves funding, and uh, yeah, if this, uh, if anybody wants to get in touch with that, I think that uh, will be amazing. So yeah, ho hopefully we do. I think it has a market for everyone. I mean, uh, uh, it would be cool to measure my own emotional waves just in, in uh, different yes. settings. I mean, you know, like uh, you know, I could. Uh, it would be amazing. Uh, yes, uh, because. Uh, it's not only uh, for uh, autist uh, children or Aspergen. Uh, we are uh, we want to uh, do that for all the mental diseases like depression, uh, ansia, ans, yes. ansios, and uh, so on. And we are studying about that mm -hmm. and uh, research about how we can do that very interesting i'll be following you carla uh very very exciting i have another question here i think it's for me it's a cb uh from am can you speak about the role of conditioning uh, and penta when we get that pull quote unquote and i, I assume you mean uh, what i was describing when i met the dawns that pull i would just ramble i guess and uh, <laughs> I mean, looking at all of these experiences and, and um, I remember another ex highlight I had, uh, I think it was, this was in 2014, where I traveled, uh, we, we made this festival in the Arctic Norway and we, uh, I remember I was driving up north uh, with a camper and we had to take a lot of ferries kind of to, to get to this place. One of these ferry I see for the first time, uh, I think I've seen uh, that uh, two dons, uh, uh, twins, 
uh, and there were these redhead uh, twins, really ginger twins. It was just um, remarkable. And by that, I'm totally into my character. And, and, um, and by that, it's no longer a pull on the back. It's just, it just happens in front of me, and, you know, and I see them, and I am already prepared when they cross me. And usually, when, I, I, I guess I became clear about this thing I did. Uh, after many years, when I got really accustomed to it, you know, when I knew my cross more, you know, when I, when everything became more clear to me, like I'm on the path of this, you know, I'm here to really, you know, to, to bring that, this flag for the dons and, and, the, and this mutant. I was really behaving like that Pied Piper, you know, uh, in the field somehow. So if I spotted someone, I kind of, I did something. I always did something physically. I'm not sure how to describe that, but I think I opened myself in the field or I did something to, you know, just a beacon into the field. So, so back to the question. And I, you know, I guess as I see my experiences with the Dawns, this would be just, you know, that the, we have to talk more about the, the collective, you know, that the gene pool, you know, and the collective and how Pentas operates and bars operate within a gene pool uh, and if we if we cross reference that to just we being uh, beings on a mutative journey facilitating for the greater sake the great mutation um in that sense it's interesting to think about why i got this pool or why i was why this penta made me see this uh i am a penta being i mean from from my design so uh, it makes sense, but I, 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 I don't know. I really, really, I really don't know. I mean, I have, don't, I'm not uh, going to pretend I have an explanation of it. And you also say, um, uh, and here further, your painting reminds me of uh, Hilma of Clint, uh, body gazing. Let's see, I'm not sure if that's what you meant, but yes, I want to mention that because yes, I did, did, uh, she's from uh, you know Scandinavia also like me, and she's part of uh, this early search of mystic uh, in the early 19th century, uh, and uh, she, immediately after or after I painted this, uh, another friend in Norway he he said the same that oh wow, this looks like him of Clint. Reminds me that so I looked her up and I I could see that and that was interesting for me because I could see something else there through my cognition in terms of uh, penta and ba and you know lineages and fractal that um, you know maybe uh, maybe we share some something on the fractal there because it was very very particularly with these circles uh, also in Hilmar Klint's uh, paintings so. Uh, that was a bit of a side note. Let's see here if I have. I told you I was an MG, like going back and forth here. Let's see if there are more questions. Um, okay, sure, we can do that. Let's see here uh, if we have some questions here. Okay, so uh, if there, I was uh, reading the chat here, that's why I, maybe I, I seem a bit distant, but, but uh, I'm picking up some questions. Uh, I can't see anything. Anymore. Yeah. So I will be uh, finishing then. We are soon uh, coming up with two hours anyways. Um, is it over already? Uh, I would like to talk about this for hours and hours. Uh, I would love to talk more about this. I, I know there are people here with children uh, uh, carrying both uh, on on different spectrums. I'm really honored that you 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 got this message uh, to come and and uh, support uh, me as a sphinx on this. Also, I mean, it's just not it's not about me. I mean, we are supporting them, but but supporting my flag on the mission with them. I, I really, really appreciate that. Uh, some word from our sponsors. Uh, as I told you, I'm the organizer uh, uh, and the founder of Human Design Experience Festival. Uh, it takes place he here in Romania, where I am currently at. We're supposed to have it in May, uh, now actually, uh, but uh, of course, 
the pandemia made us uh, uh, forced to postpone it. So, so we are doing it. September looks really promising now, and people are really, really uh, wanting to come to be together after all of this uh, bit strange times we've been through. I invite you to take a look at the, our website. Uh, I will uh, I probably show the address uh, after the next slide here, but check out the place. It's called St. George uh, in, in uh, English or Svante Gjorge in Romania by the, by the Danube Belta and Black Sea. It's, it's an amazing pearl of a place. We have a, a broad teacher spectrum, um, you know, with the principal teachers from IHDS and, and, and just a really nice teacher team of, of really good individuals. We have a Full circus of events here. We have a, we're going to have an LYD experiment this year, a seven-day experiment, leaving your design workshop, where we will, uh, of course, go through the LYD knowledge. And we will have all the four types to teach uh, each of the type material, and we will also rely heavily on aura experiments. We will put the, the theory directly into practice. You know, being in type groups, uh, so you can get a feeling of your own auric. Uh, frequency uh, and do very exciting experiments. Uh, that's what it's all about, to experiment with this knowledge. And we also have a lot of, uh, you know, different activities in embodiment and bodywork. Um, and also we rely a lot on just entertainment, having fun and, and dancing and uh, we're gonna have a theater, etc. We also have our own human design cinema with continuous raw material that's going uh, day and night almost. Welcome here, the, you will find the, the festival address here and we have the Facebook uh, with a lot of information but also on the website. Yeah, here, here they come again. So, thank you all for joining uh, and taking your time for this. I have recorded this also, so uh, we, will, uh, we will publish that, uh, I guess probably already tomorrow on our Facebook, uh, no, our um, YouTube uh, site. Uh, with the address here, youtube.com slash human design festival. Uh, let's see here. Yes, so Carla, thank you so much. Would you want to take thank your mic you. off again? Thank you so much. Thank you. It was amazing. It was a that pleasure. We could, uh, meet like this. Yeah, it was a pleasure talking with you and you all. Mm -hmm. And uh, if uh, someone want, want to talk more about that with me, can contact me on Facebook or, and we can talk and, and share uh, knowledge and uh, the experience. Uh -huh, absolutely. Okay. Maybe you want to, do you want to just in the chat uh, write the website address and the Facebook address for Ritmo so people can maybe if they want to go check it out themselves? Yes, uh, this the website it's uh, ritmoofthings.com. Okay. And uh, and the the Facebook page it's Ritmo of Things. It's uh -huh. like uh, it's like a uh, uh, a r r a t m o Ritmo. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. I will, I will send them the address also so they will see it after. Thank you so much, Carla. And uh, thank you for, to everyone else also uh, tuning in today. It was a pleasure having you all here and under this uh, umbrella. And, uh, uh, you know, we will have to see what happens. But uh, I will be very happy if this opportunity comes again and we can talk more about this. And if anybody wants to contact me directly also, you know, that will be just a pleasure. You already have my email. So, uh, yes, and uh, wherever you are uh, around the world, have a good day or a good night, and uh, until next time. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs>